The sentiment towards growth stocks has most certainly soured, but there's still plenty of interest in this particular style of investing. Today's ETF battles a triple header between three growth ETFs. It's a heavyweight bout between Schwab, Vanguard, and Invesco. Find out who wins the battle right after this. This is ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge. If you're a longtime viewer, welcome back. It's great to have you with us again. And if it's your first time watching, hit the subscribe button. Send us your comments. Let us know how you've been enjoying the show. And if there's a certain ETF battle that you'd like to see, send us your ETF ticker symbols in the comment section below or on our Twitter feed at ETF Guide. So today's ETF scuffle is between three growth stock ETFs. It's a Vanguard, Schwab, and Invesco going head to head. And this battle was requested by LG29. And it got a lot of likes, which tells me that there's still a high degree of interest in growth investing, despite the fact that growth stocks have fallen off a cliff and are now out of favor. Thank you, LG29, for your battle suggestion. You win an ETF battle shirt. Be sure to visit the description section below along with the instructions to claim your prize. So judging today's contest, we've got an illustrious duo, Jessica Ferringer with ETF.com and Mike Akins with ETF Action. Join us. Judges, welcome back. Great to see you. Good to be here, Ron. Hey, Ron. Hey, Mike. So our four battle categories are cost, exposure, strategy, performance, and then the mystery category. Our judges are going to pick their favorite ETF in each category, and I'm going to keep track of the results. We'll declare an overall battle winner. Our judges can also nominate wild cards, and it's uh, completely up to them if they see it better options elsewhere. Keep in mind, none of the outcomes on ETF battles are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or any of our judges. I've got the scorekeeping duties and my scorecards ready, so let's begin with the first category, cost. Uh, Jessica, you're up. How do you see it? So even though these three ETFs are all large cap growth ETFs, there's a pretty significant dis dispersion between their expense ratios. So SCHG is by far the cheapest, four basis points, and that's compared to 10 basis points for VOOG and 20 basis points for QQQ. So as far as cost goes, it's pretty clear SCHG wins. Thank you, Jessica. Mike, you're up next. How do you see this battle in terms of cost between these three ETFs? Uh, spot on. I mean, it's pretty clear they're there's quite a bit of overlap in these strategies, um, and they're all large cap growth currently. Get to that later um, in the episode. But I mean, as stands, I think you have to look at SCHG as a clear winner. And I'd just like to say that it's the first time I've ever had a Vanguard product in a cost matchup that's lost. So good for you, Schwab. Yes, this is a historic moment. Usually, like you, like we all know, Vanguard is is extremely competitive in this category and rarely loses. But yeah. Exactly right. You got to give kudos to Schwab. That takes us next to exposure strategy. So, Mike, you're still up. How do you see it uh, between these three ETFs? Yeah. So right now, these three ETFs are all very well aligned. Um, I say right now because um, I would expect Schwab and Vanguard to always be very well aligned. A um, couple of key things to note in this battle. All three of these strategies are market cap weighted. Um, they're all passive in nature. Um, so you're going to get a ton of exposure. Um, to the largest names, right? So the um, allocation to the top 10 of top 10% allocation for all three, three of these ETFs is above 50%. Concentrated strategies, um, you know, big weightings to your FANG names. Um, but when you really kind of look through it, um, QQQ is um, a specialty product. It's just holding the largest 100 companies in the NASDAQ. That happens to be growth. And it has happened to be growth for the last decade or so. But that is no guarantee. The markets can change and the listings inside of NASDAQ can change. So if we start seeing growth come pop up a little bit more in energy or pop up a little bit more in um, discretionary names, I would expect there to start being a differentiation in those sector weights, which could start causing some slippage in return. So looking at what they currently set up, I think I would always expect Schwab and Vanguard to look a lot alike. Um, Schwab's cheaper. Um, they're both super liquid. I'm giving the nod to Schwab. Um, QQQ is a little bit of an outlier in that it's literally sticking to those 100 largest companies 
and the NASDAQ. And right now that looks a lot alike, but that can change over time. Great points. Thank you so much, Mike, for those observations and analysis. Now we shift to Jessica. In terms of uh, exposure strategy, give us your analysis, Jessica. Yeah, so I totally agree with Mike. SCHG and VOOG are going to look a lot alike. Um, But QQQ, just by the nature of how it's designed right now, if we're thinking about the current portfolio, has a little more exposure to tech and consumer cyclicals. And I think when people are thinking about growth, that's really what they're trying to get exposure to. They want that tech exposure. Um, so overall, I like QQQ's approach, and it's different than the other two. So it stands out to me. So thank you very much, Jessica. I got you down for QQQ on exposure strategy. Um, that takes us next to performance. Jessica, give it to us. How do you see it shaken down between these three ETFs? All these ETFs have been around for quite a while. You know, VOOG is the newest of the bunch, and it's been around since September 2010. Um, so if we look at the common, common inception, uh, performance, given how similar SCHG and VOOG are, um, their performance has basically been in line with one another over that time frame. Uh, but QQQ stands out in a good way. You know, that pure tilt towards those tech names really adding value over that time frame, um, as those names have really just been on a tear over the past couple of years. So that's not necessarily to say this is going to be the case going forward, but in terms of past performance, QQQ wins. Thank you, Jessica. Mike, how do you see it in terms of performance between these three funds? Yeah, I mean, I totally agree that um, it's been almost impossible to beat the Qs over the last decade. Um, you know, one could make the argument that that is driven by their top five names. Um, and I do believe that there will be um, a time in our future where those top five names are not the top five names anymore, but they'll still be the top five names in the Qs, um, right? So, to that extent, um, a clear winner past performance is the Qs, though. Um, you know, Schwab and Vanguard products both kept up pretty well. It's not a clear runaway like it normally would be when you're going up against the Qs um, in that large gap, that large cap growth category. Um, but looking at it forward, um, I tend to like the methodology a little bit better in the lower cost of the Schwab product. Um, I think if I'm looking for growth, those two are growth designed indexes. Um, and again, it's not that I don't like the cues because I do, um, but I think for this battle, I'm going to give the nod to Schwab looking forward because I do think that some of that exposure in the top 10 of the NASDAQ um, is susceptible to some headwinds in the future, um, especially when it comes to broad-based regulation, antitrust laws, things of that nature, which can slow their growth down a lot. And all we have to do is think back to Microsoft and its days when it was going through antitrust regulations and what it did to its performance. That scenario will affect Qs. Schwab and Vanguard, if it affects the growth those companies will adjust, the Qs will not um, unless some other company somehow overtakes them. So on that note, I'm giving it to Schwab, SCHG, because I think it's able to react to changing environments a little bit better. This has been a great battle up until now, almost evenly split. So we're going to have an exciting outcome. That takes us next to our mystery battle category. This is where our judges can pick that single factor or maybe multiple factors to make their arguments and to persuade us. So, Mike, what is your mystery battle category and who wins it? Yes, I've been alluding to it kind of the whole the whole battle. But my mystery category is cause and effect. And sometimes something happens and you're able to understand the cause. Right? I'm able to understand why value or growth or quality or a different factor in the marketplace did what it did. I'm, under, I'm able to understand why a certain commodity or a certain sector or industry performed the way it did. Um, with respect to the cues, it's completely random. Like they are companies that have decided to list on the NASDAQ instead of the New York Stock Exchange. And therefore um, there is no cause to the effect of the cues doing so well, other than the fact that they happen to have a ridiculously high exposure to the five mega tech companies that have dominated our market for the last decade. And to that extent, in a, in a category like this, when I'm thinking about large cap growth, I want there to be a cause to my effect. And both VOOG and SCHG are designed to capture growth companies. Now, I would argue that there's better ways to capture growth than market cap passive. I'd rather do it in a more smart beta version of you know going after it the growthier companies or not weighting it based on market cap. But in this battle, going up against the Qs, I'm going to go um, with that idea of when I invest, I want there to be a cause to the effect. And I'm going to give it to SCHG because it's cheaper. 
Thank you, Mike. That takes us to Jessica. What is your mystery battle category, Jessica, and who wins it? My mystery battle category is investor appeal. And when it comes to popularity with investors, QQQ is it for, for growth ETFs. It's got over $200 billion in assets, highly liquid due to being one of the most traded ETFs in the U.S. You know, that specific exposure, exposure offered by that is highly desirable to today's investor, so much that even the triple leveraged version, TQQQ, has nearly $19 billion in assets. I think that's wild. So, you know, going back to what we talked about in the beginning, QQQ is the most expensive of these ETFs, um, but that's obviously not dissuading investors who want access to this specific take on the market. So Kiki use my pick um, for mystery category of investor appeal. Thank you, Jessica. Now we move to the overall part of the show. Where we're going to declare our final winner. Before we do that, we're going to give our judges a last chance to give us their viewpoint on who today's overall winner is. So Jessica, you're up. Give it to us. Okay, so I'm going to throw a wild card in here, and that's QQQM. It's essentially the same thing as QQQ, but with a cheaper expense ratio. It's only 15 basis points. And the way to think about these ETFs, um, you know, QQQ is more of a trading vehicle, but QQQM is better suited towards your buy and hold investor. Given the timing for this battle and the rotation that we're starting to see in the market right now, I really hope that if you're adding to growth, it's a buy and hold position and you're in it for the long term. So you'd benefit from the, the lower expense ratio of QQQM. So that's my pick for overall. That's an excellent wildcard choice. Thank you, Jessica. And uh, Mike, give us your overall battle winner. And do you have any wild cards to surprise us with? Yeah. So, I mean, the overall winner is going to be SCHG. I think it does a good job of capturing the overall growth metrics of the market, but without getting out of bounds with respect to um, allocations. And when I say out of bounds, meaning that that market cap is going to keep it pinned into um, the broad-based benchmark of the S&P 500 or the total market universe that it's starting with. Now, a little fact to keep in mind when you're thinking value and growth is technically, if you take the S&P 500 value, the S&P 500 growth, you put them together, that's supposed to make the S&P 500, right? So, you know, splitting those two strategies together over time, you're just going to pay a higher expense to get the S&P 500. So if you like factors, I've always said there's a lot of good reasons to invest in factors. but I don't like market cap factors um, because market cap factors are going to, at the end of the day, if I want to own 50% high growth and 50% high value, do RPV and RPG. Those are two great tickers that are more of an equal weighted version, um, truly going after growth versus um, the just broad-based growth and value indexes, especially for the buy and hold investor. Otherwise, tactically, go where you want to go. That's the beautiful thing about tactical. Um, so my overall winner is SCHG. Um, and you know my overall thought on QQQ is keep in mind cause and effect. Um, you know, there's no questioning what it's done over the last 10 years. The, the future can be a lot different. Um, and the structure for me is tough to get over when it comes to concept of that. And I'll throw one last in. I am way out of over time, but keep in mind, like, guess what is rebalancing out of QQQ right now? Peloton. Guess what's going into QQQ right now? Old Dominion Freight, right? So that is, that is a factor of the 100 largest companies in the market right now. And I think it's a, it's a good example of the difference between a growth strategy and the Qs. It just happened to be a growth strategy. Well, our judges have weighed in and have made some awesome arguments and points. And today's final decision in this triple header, it's going to be a split decision between SCHG from Schwab. That was Mike's choice. And QQQM, a wildcard choice by Jessica, which basically does the same thing as the triple Qs, except it's got a lower expense ratio. So it's a cheaper version. And as she pointed out, it's uh, also an ETF that uh, if you're interested in growth investing and you're buy and hold investor, uh, that, that's the one to keep on your radar and uh, certainly uh, making some strong arguments. Uh, cause and effect was a, a great mystery battle category, as was investor appeal. But again, I think each of our judges made some solid points. I particularly enjoyed the point that Mike made about the composition of the triple Q's changing even though right now it's mostly tech and consumer cyclical, uh, the dynamics of that index as market sentiment changes and stocks rotate in and out of favor, we may see the composition of that, those underlying sectors change. 
And so that's just something to keep an eye on. But again, judges, outstanding job in breaking down today's triple header. We really appreciate the solid work. Thanks, Ryan. Good to see you, Jessica. Hey, thanks for having me on. <laughs> well, be sure to visit our description section below. We've got links to not only to our podcast, as well as uh, viewer resources, but also to our judges. So you can check out their fine research. They both do excellent uh, work at their respective places of, of work. And then also I want to mention that um, be sure to give us your ETF battles, your ticker symbols. You could do that on our Twitter feed at ETF Guide or again in the comment section below. We can do head-to-head -head matchups. We can do triple headers, quadruple headers. I personally like the tri 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 triple and the quadruple headers because like the late Tommy Lasorda said, he likes extra innings because we get to keep on our uniforms a little bit longer. Well, thanks for watching ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge. And until next time, watch the battle before you invest right here on ETF Guide TV.